Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Amanda. I'm a third year vet student and in today's video I'm going to be answering the most frequently asked questions that I get asked about vet school and the application process. But first, let's grab a coffee. Okay, now that I've got my coffee, let's get into the questions. And the first one is, how do I get into vet school? Now, I could talk about this question for hours, but the long story short is that it's gonna depend on which vet school you're applying to. For OVC specifically, you're gonna need to submit your marks for eight prerequisite courses that you take in your undergrad degree. You're also gonna need to submit the marks from your last two full-time semesters of your undergrad, as well as volunteer and work experience. On top of that, you need three reference letters, two of them being from veterinarians and then one can just be a personal reference and then once you submit all of that information if your marks meet the cutoff for that year's applicants you'll be invited to an interview now the interview is going to be the last step before you get accepted into vet school and as of right now they're currently using the Casper test for the interview process as well as a 15 minute virtual face-to-face -face interview so those are the requirements to apply to the Ontario Veterinary College now to sum up that you're gonna need really good marks you're gonna need experience within vet med as well as just extracurricular experience. You're going to need to build relationships with veterinarians because you're going to need to submit their names for reference letters. And then you're also going to want to make sure that you have really good interview and communication skills so that when you're doing the Casper and your in-person interview, you can put your best foot forward. So that is a really long answer summed up into your little Sparks Note version. Make sure you check out your university and the vet school that you're applying to to see all of their application requirements and their process for getting into vet school. But like I said, that was the Sparks Notes version of how to get into vet school at OVC. Okay, question number two actually ties into the first answer I just gave, and it is how much experience do you need to apply to vet school? Now, every university is going to be different, and there's going to be some universities that place a heavier emphasis on experience. However, at OVC, there is no minimum requirement or minimum number of hours that you need to submit to apply to vet school. Because of this, when I was applying to vet school, School, I really tried to stick with the motto of quality over quantity. I prioritize certain experiences, volunteer opportunities, or jobs, and I really put a lot of effort and time into those specific experiences because I knew I was getting a lot out of them or I was able to build really good relationships with the vets there. So even though I didn't have a hundred experiences when I went into vet school, I had a few solid jobs or experiences where I was really able to build good relationships with the vets and learn a lot in those opportunities. I personally think that was way more valuable on my application than just having a ton of different places that I had volunteered or worked at. And another thing to keep in mind is that OVC really prioritizes marks on their application. So when I was going through undergrad, I definitely focused a lot more on marks versus volunteer experiences. So that's just something to keep in mind when you are going through the application process. Figure out the weaknesses on your application and try and target those. And if you feel like you have some really good experience under your your belt already, try not to worry too much about that and maybe focus on another area of your application that you think you could improve on. So although there is no set number of hours that you need to apply to vet school, I would definitely recommend finding experiences that give you a good idea of what veterinary medicine is like so that you know what to expect when you get into the program. So now that we've talked about the experience part of your application, that leads me into question number three, which deals with another part of the application and that is, do I need really high marks to get into vet school? So this the simple answer to this question is yes, you are going to need high marks to get into vet school. On the OVC website, it says that you can apply to vet school with a minimum of a 75% average. But if I am being completely real with you guys, a 75 is not going to cut it. The acceptance average over the past two years has gone from about an 88 to a 90%. So definitely keep that in mind when you are applying to vet school and definitely prioritize your marks because you know you are going to need high ones to get accepted into vet school. The cutoff average is obviously going to vary at different schools and some vet schools may weight your experience and your marks a little bit differently, but if you're hoping to apply to OVC, definitely keep marks in the back of your mind as you're going through undergrad because they are going to play a huge role in your application. Now moving into question number five, and this is one I get asked really often, and it is what undergrad should I take to prepare me for vet school? Now the cool thing about vet school and the veterinary profession is there's no dedicated pre-vet undergrad that will get you into vet school. You can apply to veterinary medicine with 
any undergrad degree as long as you've been able to complete your prerequisite courses needed to apply while you're an undergrad. I personally think this is super cool because it means that the students in vet school have a variety of different backgrounds and have come from undergrads like animal biology, biomedical science, engineering, or psychology. Because students have a wide variety of backgrounds when it comes to their pre-vet education, it leads to a lot of really cool conversations and it's really interesting to see the experience experiences that other students have had and the different knowledge that they come to vet school with. With that being said, I would definitely recommend taking a science-based undergrad because veterinary medicine is obviously very based in science. So I think preparing yourself in undergrad by taking a course that is heavily rooted in science will only help you once you get into vet school. Some of the courses that I personally struggled with in my first year of vet school were anatomy and histology because I hadn't taken them in undergrad, but my undergrad degree of animal biology, I think prepared me really well in other aspects for the veterinary profession. So it really is up to you and finding a program that you enjoy and that you feel like you are going to be successful in is key to picking an undergrad program before applying to vet school. So that is question number five. We are halfway done. Now moving on to question number six. Okay, I'm just editing the video and I clearly cannot count. So this next question is number five. The one after that is number six and then I figure it out after and we get back on track, but just hang in there with the number thing for a couple more questions. Now I actually combined two questions for this next one because I think they tie really well into one another and I get asked them honestly all the time. So question number six is how hard is vet school and is it possible to have a life in the program? I really wanted to include these questions because it's something that I try and talk a lot about on my channel and that is having a work-life balance in a professional program. Because if I'm being completely honest with you guys, yes, vet school is hard. It is the hardest thing that I have ever done. But even with all of that being said, I really try and have a life life outside of vet school. Especially this past year, I've really tried to prioritize having that work-life balance. And if you guys have watched any of my videos, you know that vet school is not really designed with that work-life balance in mind. In vet school, you could study for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and still have content to learn. So that's why it's so important to set boundaries for yourself and take time away from vet school to do things that make you happy outside of the program. I guess what I'm trying to say is that yes, vet school is hard. There is a lot Lot of information to learn in four years, but it is definitely possible to do things outside of the veterinary program and have that life that you really want, even as a vet student. I make a point of taking one day off every single week to do things that I enjoy, whether it be hanging out with family and friends, going on a walk, or even binge watching a Netflix show for the entire day. By giving myself that day, I feel so much more recharged and more motivated to study when I actually get back into a new week. And I really genuinely believe believe that having that work-life balance and taking time for myself to take breaks away from vet school has only made my experience in the program that much better. So if you are entering vet school or if you're thinking about wanting to be a vet, just know that yes, vet school is hard, but you can definitely do it. So that is my little rant about having a life in vet school and prioritizing a work-life balance. Let's move into question number six, and that is what do I need to do in high school if I think that I want to go to vet school? So if you are in high school and you think that you want to go into the veterinary profession and you want to apply to vet school, first of all, I want to say that I believe in you and I know that it seems like a really long journey from high school to vet school, but it will go by faster than you think, so just keep with it and don't give up on that dream. It can be challenging, but I promise you it is so worth it in the end. Now onto the advice portion. So what do you actually need to do while you're in high school if you're thinking about veterinary medicine as a career? I have an entire video on my channel about advice that I would give to high school students wanting to get into vet school so I will leave that up here if you haven't checked it out already but for this video I'm gonna give you my number one piece of advice that I would give to any high school student thinking about veterinary medicine and that is to take any volunteer opportunity, experience, work experience, whatever it might be that you are presented with in high school. In my opinion, high school is the perfect time to go out and get experience for your vet school application because you don't have the pressure of having to get really high marks. Your high school marks are not gonna count towards your vet school application. So the only thing you need to be worried about marks wise in high school is getting the marks that you need to get into an undergrad program. Now, with that being said, typically the averages and the cutoff ranges to get 
get into undergrad are a lot lower than the average to get into vet school. So because of that, you can focus a little bit more and prioritize your experience in high school versus getting super high marks. Whereas when you get into university, marks are gonna become super important. So that's definitely something you wanna focus on. So I tell every high school student to take advantage of that and go out and try and find volunteer or job opportunities while you're in high school that will expose you to the veterinary profession. The experience that I got while I was in high school as well as the co-op that I did were honestly the most valuable experiences that I put on my vet school application. And I really do think that those experiences built me into the vet student that I am today. And the lessons that came from those experiences are things that I will carry with me even when I'm out practicing as a vet. So that is my one main tip for high school students. Like I said, if you haven't checked out that video, I will link it up here as well as down below in the description if you haven't checked it out already. But that leads me into question number seven. And this is one that makes me giggle every single time I see it because it's something that I definitely thought about as I was applying to vet school and going through the process, but I was too scared to ask anyone. So question number seven is, do you need to be good at math? Now, speaking from experience, I am happy to tell you that you do not need to be a math genius to get into vet school. I personally am not very good at math. Some vet schools require you to submit a statistics prereq, which my vet school definitely did, but I was lucky that I had a really good stats professor. And honestly, I found stats a lot easier to understand than other math courses like calculus and vectors, because all in all, I am not good at math. Mental math, cannot do. Need to have a calculator with me at all times. But you know what the great thing is, is that you're always carrying your phone with you. And if I'm being completely honest, the math that we do in vet school is all pretty simple math. As long as you know how to plug numbers into a formula and do simple math equations, you should be good to go. So if this is something you were wondering, don't worry, I was in the exact same position as you and I am happy to tell you that you do not need to be good at math. I'm definitely not, so don't worry. Moving on to a question number eight, and that is, can you have pets in vet school. Yes, yes, absolutely, 100%. I personally recommend it because let me tell you, pets are a great stress reliever, which is kind of funny because I don't actually have a pet at the moment. However, that might be changing soon. But with that being said, yes, it is 100% possible to have a vet while you are to have a vet. No, it is 100% possible to have a pet while you were in vet school. Like I said before, vet school is difficult and the course load and the workload is pretty heavy and you will be spending a lot of time studying and in class. So just keep that in mind if you're planning on getting a dog, probably more so than a cat, but it really is just all about prioritizing. And if you have a pet that you know you need to walk on your lunch hour or before class or after class, that's something that you're gonna prioritize. Now this might not be for everyone and you might just wanna focus on vet school, but if you already have a pet and you are going into vet school and you're worried about how to balance that, I promise you it is doable. I would say the majority of people in vet school have pets at home, so it is definitely possible to add that into the mix when you are a vet student. Also, your pet might hate you for it, but you can practice physical exams on them when you're studying at home, so it's a win-win for everyone, really. Question number nine is another two-part question, but I figured they tied really well into each other, so we're just gonna pretend like it's one question, and that is, how do you pay for vet school, and is it possible to have a job while you're in the program. I am sure if you have looked into vet school, you know that it is another four years of school and school is expensive. So I think it's really fair that a lot of people have questions and concerns about how to pay for that schooling. I personally have been very fortunate and my parents have helped out a lot when it's come to paying for my schooling. But let's be real, life in general is expensive. Take out the school part of it and just paying to live while you're a student can be super expensive. Because of this, a lot of people do get jobs while they're in the program. In my first year, I decided that I wasn't going to work while I was in school just so that I could figure out how much time I was actually going to spend studying and if I could balance having a job on the side. Then I started YouTube in my second year and now I treat YouTube and social media as a part-time job. I spend about 10 to 15 hours a week filming, editing, and creating content for you guys to see on social media. And I am super lucky that I am monetized here on YouTube. So basically what that means is that Anytime one of you guys watch an ad on my videos, I get a small percentage of the ad revenue from that video. It is by no means a lot of money, but at this point, honestly, anything helps. So I did just wanna say a massive thank you to you guys. If you have ever watched an ad on my video, it honestly means more to me than you could ever know, and it helps more than you might think. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you've ever sat through an ad on my video, I know it's annoying, but it definitely helps me in the long run. So like I said, I treat YouTube as a part-time job, so 
so it is definitely possible to have a job while you're in vet school at the end of the day it just comes down to your time management and what you're prioritizing but it is definitely possible to juggle both now obviously what i make on youtube is not enough to live on by any stretch of the imagination so when it comes to that student loans are going to be your best friend because they are my best friend this will obviously differ depending on where you live but i am in ontario canada and we have a program called osap where we get loans and grants from the government to go towards our schooling obviously what i get in loans i'm gonna have to pay back once i'm graduated so that is definitely something to keep in mind is how much student debt you're accumulating and creating a financial plan to be able to pay that back once once you're out and working. So I guess there really is no simple answer to this question because vet school is expensive and it's gonna differ for every single person on what their circumstances are. But if you're sitting there thinking, oh my God, how am I gonna pay for this? This is so expensive. I promise you, you are not alone. I think the majority of students are in that same boat and the majority of students come out of vet school with student debt. And we made it to question number 10. If you guys have stuck around this long, thanks for watching and I hope you got some of your vet school questions answered. Now it's time to answer the question that I hands down get asked the most often and that is how to study in vet school. I hate to break it to you, but there is no perfect way to study in vet school that is going to work for everyone. So this answer might be a little bit all over the place, but I'm gonna try and explain to you how I found the perfect method that works for me when it comes to studying in vet school. So the most important thing is to figure out what type of learner you are. For reference, I am definitely a visual slash slightly auditory learner. So I had to go out and try different study methods that revolved around those type of learning styles and figure out which ones worked best for me. Now that is the key to studying in vet school is trying out tons of different methods. I know that's annoying and I wish I could just tell you one method that is going to work for every single person, but that's just not how it goes. And I personally study different for certain classes depending on how the material is presented. For me, vet school was very different from undergrad, so a lot of the study methods that I had in undergrad didn't end up working in vet school, but I finally found a couple that really work for me. So I will go ahead and share those with you so that you at least get something out of this question. So my number one way that I study is is I just annotate the lecture notes when I'm given them by the professor. So as I'm watching the lecture, I will just write directly on my lecture slides. I don't retype my notes. I don't rewrite my notes. I definitely do not have time for that. So I just write directly on those lecture slides. And then when I go back to study, I will just go through all of my lectures and I will read what is on the lecture slides as well as the content that I wrote on them. For me, this is the most efficient way to study in vet school because you just don't have a lot of extra time. So using the resources that I was given by my professors, definitely saved me a lot of time but I also found I was a lot more attentive during lectures because I was adding things to every single lecture slide. Now for some classes I find that this doesn't work and I have to go ahead and make one page study guides for every single lecture. Sometimes the slides are just way too confusing and I have no idea what's going on or there's literally only a picture on the slide and I have no idea what that even means. So if that's the case then I will go ahead and I will make study guides for those classes but I will limit myself to to one to two pages per lecture. This way I'm only writing down the most important information and I'm really focusing on key concepts that I think are going to be tested on later on. I have a video explaining how I studied for three different classes in my first year so I will again put that up here if you want some reference or if you want some ideas on how to study and which classes I studied which way for. I talk about anatomy, physiology, and clinical medicine in that video which are all three very different classes. So I used three very different study methods for all of those. So don't be afraid to go out and try new study methods. I honestly try them all the time to try and perfect my study routine, but I don't know if I'm ever going to get to that point. <laughs> So there you have it. Those are my most frequently asked questions about vet school and the application process. I hope you guys learned something from this video. I hope you got your question answered. If not, definitely feel free to leave them down below or you can send me a DM on Instagram. You can find me on there at Student Vet Amanda, and I am happy to answer any other question that you might have. If you want to follow along on my vet school journey, definitely make sure to subscribe down below. I'm starting my third year in a couple weeks, so there is gonna be a ton of back to school content as well as daily vlogs coming up for you to watch. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.